Now, what does the punishment period of Israel have to do with the 70th week of Daniel? Let's take a look at the 70th week of Daniel. This is found in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. It says, And he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of, week, of the week he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Let's take a look at the passage here. There is a lot of, of controversy as to who is being spoken of here in this very first phrase, where it says, and he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. There are many Bible teachers who try to tell us that he is the Antichrist, <clears throat> and that he will make a firm covenant with Israel, or the Jews, for seven years. Well, that simply is not the case and does not fit the context of the entire passage. If, let's look in Daniel 9, verse 26, which is the preceding passage. It says, Then after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing, and the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end will come with a flood. Even to the end there will be war. Desolations are determined. Okay, the subject of that passage is Messiah, which is also Elohim. It is not any kind of imaginary antichrist who is allegedly going to make a, a contract with the Jews. As a matter of fact, in all of prophetic scripture, there is not one time mentioned the term antichrist. The only time the term antichrist is used is in the letters of First and Second John. Neither letter is prophetic in nature. So looking for an antichrist that doesn't exist is simply a waste of time. <clears throat> it exists in the, uh, in the imaginations of, of many prophecy Bible teachers. It says that the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The, the prince who is to come, that was Rome. They came. The prince who is to come is the spiritual entity of Rome, which led that empire. They destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the temple. It says, and he, Messiah, will make a firm covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he'll put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. Let's see, look a little closer at Daniel 9, verse 27 in different translations. It says in this first phrase, and he, being Messiah, or Elohim, will make a firm covenant with many for one week. That term in the Hebrew about making a firm covenant is better translated in other translations. In the King James Bible, it says, He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The New King James also says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The NIV, which I seldom quote, but here they seem to get it right, it says, And he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Elohim will confirm his covenant of multiplying the punishment period of the northern kingdom of Israel by seven that he initially made in Torah in Leviticus 26. He says, I am confirming, I'm going to multiply the punishment period of the northern kingdom of Israel by seven. Okay, that's what he's saying. I'm confirming that. I'm going to stick with it. And he did. Keep in mind, in Leviticus 26, verse 28, he says that I will act with wrathful hostility against you, and I, even I, will punish you seven times for your sins. Look at what it says in Daniel 9, 27 again. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Let's look at those terms in the Hebrew. Seven in Leviticus 26 is the term Sheba. It means seven times. Let's look at that term week in Daniel 927. It means to be sevened. It's the term Shabua. So it means to be sevened, which is just like Sheba in Leviticus 26, to be multiplied by seven. Now, he says in Daniel 927, and he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. He is confirming his covenant with Israel to multiply their punishment times seven. But in the middle of the week, 
he will put a stop to grain offering or to sacrifice and grain offering and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate. Well, here we are with abominations and desolate again. That seems to ring the truth of the Muslim empire as it did in other places in Daniel. Let's take a look at this particular passage. What happened in the middle of the week and how does this tie to the Muslim empire? The punishment period for Israel, keep in mind, was 1,300, or excuse me, 2,690.817 years. If we take one half of that time, 1,345.4 years, <clears throat> we see that that is the middle of the week. That is one half of this punishment period. So if we start at 1967 and take one half of this punishment period, it takes us to 622 A.D. This is the middle of the week. We find that Islam was founded in 622 A.D. by Muhammad the prophet. In the Hegira, the Hijra, the flight or migration from Mecca to Medina, Arabia, and marks the beginning of the Islam and Muslim calendar. This is in religioncults.com. All these references I use, you can look up on the internet, and there are dozens or hundreds of references that will back this up. According to the Islamic calendar, the year zero is the year 622 AD. This is the year Muhammad converted his first group of followers and started the Islamic faith. Let's look at this passage again, Daniel 9:27. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week, for one seven. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. How did he absolutely put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering? He did that by building, by, by letting the uh, Muslim Empire build the Dome of the Rock in the very place that Israel had to use in order to offer sacrifices and offerings. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate which is Muhammad in the Islam religion. Even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. In, every, in most other Bible teachers will ignore the last two-thirds of this passage, and it's a huge mistake. It says, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Even until a complete destruction... The Muslim empire will make desolate until the very end where they, where they will meet their destruction at the return of Messiah. <clears throat> Let's look at Daniel 7, verse 25, and it says, And he will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints of the Highest One, and he will intend to make alterations in times and in Torah, and they will be given into his hand for a time, times, and a half a time. The Muslim Empire has desired to destroy the Jewish people. They've intended to make alterations in Torah with their Koran. And they have made alterations in times with their own calendar system. Elohim showed them when the Muslim Empire would appear in 622 A.D. That's the very year Muhammad started it. It's told explicitly in Daniel 9.27 that that is what would happen. These things were prophesied in Scripture long, long before they happened. The Muslim Empire, as we have looked at it in Scripture, has been very well defined. We've seen that we have the abomination of desolation as prophesied in Scripture as being the, the abomination that makes desolate. It is the object that has stopped sacrifices and offerings that his people would make to him. We see the Muslim Empire as it's described as the statue of Nebuchadnezzar of iron mixed with clay. And they're very strong, but they're very weak in many ways also, and they would not mix with one another. We see that the punishment periods of Israel were fully fulfilled in Scripture, that the punishment period of Judah was fulfilled in 1948, the punishment period of Israel was fulfilled in 1967, and we see the prediction of the Muslim Empire in 622 A.D.